Hi, I'm Victoria, and I'm so pleased to have Jeffrey D., the President CEO for Habitat for Humanity Metro Maryland, as our guest on Listen Up Home Buyers. Jeff has been with Habitat since 2013 in a variety of capacities, and during his tenure, he has achieved 161% increase in funds raised for Habitat Metro Maryland. Jeff, it is such a pleasure to have you on Listen Up Home Buyers. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. And Jeff, um, for people who don't know, and I'm not sure who that would be, <laughs> but could you, would you give me an overview? What is Habitat for Humanity? Uh, it's a great question. So Habitat for Humanity um, is a great organization that was started about uh, 40 years ago now, 45 years ago. Uh, and it is all about um, two key concepts, uh, inclusivity. Uh, bringing people together uh, from all walks of life and uh, partnership housing, partnership housing where men and women, uh, boys, girls, uh, people from all walks of life can come together uh, with the simple concept of us partnering with another family or with a family in need to build decent and affordable housing. Do you rehab houses or do you build houses on existing lots or do you do some sort of a combination of both? So we, we do new construction. That's what we're typically known for, uh, mm -hmm. building new homes uh, on you know, vacant land or on in, infill lots. Um, and then the other thing we also do is we do rehabs where we will purchase a vacant distressed property and we will um, uh, purchase it, uh, gut it. Uh, we normally will put in anywhere from 75 to $100,000 into a home. Mm -hmm. We rebuild it, we put in all new systems as necessary, and then we sell it to a family. Uh, in both cases, we, with the new construction of the rehabs, it's 0% interest for a 30-year mortgage. How, how does Habitat go about securing properties, securing lots uh, in this kind of a competitive market that we're in here in 2022? We have to get very creative, and we have to look at uh, properties and opportunities that other people would pass up. So uh, you know, as I was mentioning earlier, we'll buy a vacant distressed property. Mm -hmm. So we'll buy properties that other people won't touch because they'll be like, they, you know, they can't make a, uh, a profit on it. So it's very challenging right now. We're, we're working on or talking to various faith groups. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of faith groups that have um, land that they'd be willing to, you know, work out some type of, of arrangement, whether there's mm -hmm. a ground lease or some other way to compensate them for the land. And, you know, we're building affordable housing on that property. Uh, it's very complicated. There's a yeah. lot of different, um, you know, different deals that kind of come uh, past my desk and you have to evaluate whether it's feasible, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. is it going to work? Do some people, um, gift you houses and gift you land, um, sort of like, uh, nature conservancy does, um, with, with land, that kind of a concept. Um, th they can, I mean, we, we'll absolutely take that. We haven't had that yet in this mm -hmm. area, probably yeah. because, you know, the, the value of land, um, is, is so high. I will say that, there are times when uh, Montgomery County or Prince George's County, the government uh, has, uh, you know, they'll sell us land at a dollar for a dollar, uh, as an wow. example. Uh -huh. um, we're actually partnering with uh, Arlington Housing Corporation, AHC, mm -hmm. um, and Interfaith Works on uh, a project at the intersection of Randolph Road and Veers Mill. Yeah. Um, it's a 6.2 acre uh, lot owned by Montgomery County, they're going to sell it to us for a dollar and we're going to build 195 affordable uh, units, wow. uh, 27 home ownership, and then the rest will be rental. So we're, we're building the home ownership, home ownership part. And then uh, AHC and Interfaith Works is building the rental units. The, 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 the reality is, you know, affordable housing is a need, it is a critical need in this area. And if it weren't for the county willing to step in and say, okay, here's this property we have, we mm -hmm. are, we're willing to sell it to you for a dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, if they got market value, we, we just, we couldn't afford to do it. No, um, I, I think it's miraculous that you can afford to do it anyway. Can you tell me about financing? Um, I know you take donations because I've, I've given donations. Um, so, so how do you, how do you finance all of this? Um, so, well, it depends, but, uh, so first, thank you for your donation. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the, the critical element is, um, we're always going to lose money on a house. We just want to lose as little as possible. 
okay. um, when we are selling houses. And the, the, the way we can do it, uh, talking back to the uh, Randolph Road project as an mm -hmm. example. So we are in the middle of a $1.5 million capital campaign. Mm -hmm. So our part of the project is $9.4 million. And we are raising 1.5 as a capital campaign. We're looking at new market tax credits, federal home loan bank, uh, construction loan with a local, uh, a local bank, gifts in kind. You know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of great organizations, companies out there that will donate their time. The way we make it work is uh, by having that extra element of uh, fundraising. We also operate restores. Mm -hmm. Restores are, I call them Salvation Army on steroids. We, mm -hmm. we take donations of furniture, uh, appliances, electronics, uh, tools, and we sell them at, uh, sell those items at discounted prices to the general public. Mm -hmm. And that revenue rate, that revenue raise goes right towards affordable housing. The name Habitat gets you a lot of opportunity for people to help you. I uh, bet. And, and, yeah. And we need it and we take advantage of it whenever mm -hmm. we can because mm -hmm. it's, you know, we don't have an army of uh, people that can do all the permitting and all the other work. We just right. rely on a very, uh, a very um, lean staff to, to yeah. do everything. Okay, so you set it all up. You've got a, you've got the land. You've got the project ready to go. Um, right. Who is helping you build these, the, this project in particular, but really all the projects? So you know, we so we have. Um, we're a licensed general contractor. We, you know, we're licensed in the state of Maryland. We have two full-time construction staff, but really the, the way that we, the, the way the habitat model works is that it's men and women like you, it's, it's volunteers uh, coming out and helping us build. And that's how we keep our, our costs down because mm -hmm. a lot of the work can be done by volunteers. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. future homeowner, this is important. I think a lot of people, when they think of habitat, the two myths are that Jimmy Carter started it, which is not yeah. true. He's oh. our most famous volunteer. Okay. Yeah. He's our, so it was started by Millard and Linda Fuller uh, back in 1976. The second myth is that we give houses away and mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's not true at all. And matter mm -hmm. of fact, when a person comes to us and says, uh, you know, I'm interested in purchasing a home, okay. we're okay. underwriting them for a 30, 30 year, 0% mortgage. Wow. Um, they're hardworking families. They have jobs, um, but they just don't earn enough. Or maybe they had a rough patch uh, a mm -hmm. couple of years ago. And so or even now in the pandemic or even now or even you know? now. Right. Yeah. So um, so they have to they have to do the same um, same work, you know, with the financials. And on top of that, mm -hmm. uh, they have to do what we call sweat equity, where they are actually building on the construction site. So how do you structure this? How many hours do they have to put in in order to get that sweat equity and meet that whatever criteria it is that you have? Yeah, it's a great question. So typically, um, just using you and your husband as an example. So there are two okay. adults over 18 in your house. So you would have to do 400 hours of sweat equity wow. combined. Now, the, when we talk about sweat equity, we also combine, we add in there, um, uh, like you have two children. So let's say your, you know, your daughter, she gets an A during report card. Mm -hmm. uh, that A counts as a, an hour of sweat equity so that everybody wow. has a chance to be able to say, I helped with this. To house. contribute. Yeah. To contribute. Yeah. And then yeah. the other, the other element is, um, so half of the, half of the hours have to be done on the construction site. And then the other half or a little bit more uh, have to be done in homeowner education classes. Wow. So one of the cool things about Habitat um, is when we sell a house to a family and we enter into a 30 year partnership, um, mm -hmm. we are we are doing everything we can to set them up for success. Right. So they will take classes through us on budgeting. You know, we sell them the house. It's their house. They own it. But but we, we do like to think of ourselves as partners with them. Good, good. Now I want to back up a little bit because you talk sure. about all this, these hours that people have to put in and, you know, first of all, I love this concept so much. Do you offer some kind of training? Because I, I know, you know, I love to take on projects, but when I get in over my head, my husband who has built houses can kind of come along and go, yeah, no, that, you know, I'm going to help you with this piece of it. How do you train people who have no background at all in construction to put in 400 hours worth of work? 
a lot of patients. Um, mm-hmm. So we have two full-time construction managers uh-huh. and underneath them, we have what we call long-term uh, construction volunteers. We call them crew leaders. Some things we, we, we don't have volunteers do electrical, yeah. uh, plumbing, um, you know, anything that requires a, a permit uh, or inspection that, you know, we, we have the sure. professionals do it. Right. Right. But a lot of time, you know, it's putting up fences, putting up uh, walls, framing walls, you have somebody come through and of course, check all the work. And then of course you'll have everything checked by licensed, you know, electricians, plumbers, and contractors. Yeah, we're, we're doing the work, but they're teaching us every step of the way. So that's one of the reasons why Habitat houses, you know, they tend to take longer than a, than a for-profit builder sure. um, because we rely on volunteers. Um, and, you know, we can't finish the house too fast because the homeowner needs to get their sweat equity in. Um, right. and that's their yeah. commitment to the project. So, right. uh, it is a village coming together it is. And, and making this possible. And it, you know, you look at it like, how is this even working? Cause you have all these disparate parts <laughs> that have to fit in and work. And, um, it does, I, I, it, there's a magic there because oh. logically it, it shouldn't work. How do you determine who gets a house and who doesn't? Yeah, it's a great question. It's really important. Again, because we don't give away houses, we spread the word. You know, we have several hundred, if not thousand, people on our inquiry list. Uh, people have said, I, "I'm interested." You know, the next time there's availability, can you please let me know? Yeah. So we send out. You know, hey, we have this availability in you know Montgomery County and Prince George's County. Here's the application. Here's what you need to do, and here's the deadline. Family will apply. Uh, and again, it's it's there's no differentiation between a family applying to a bank for a mortgage and us, mm-hmm. ex- with the exception of we offer zero interest mortgage. That's a big um, difference. <laughs> right. It, well, it's a huge difference. But in terms of like the paperwork, what people have to go through. OK, it's same, yeah. Same process. I think the the thing that I'm really proud of is that we are willing to take we are willing and able to take chances on families, mm-hmm. you know, families who. Uh, are at 30% of AMI. So they're making $35,000, $40,000 a year. So once a family comes to us and says, mm-hmm. I would like to um, purchase a house, we give them the application, they fill it out, they send it back to us. And the first question is, um, do you have a legitimate housing need? Mm-hmm. Um, you have a willingness to partner. So you're willing to do the sweat equity with us. What about yeah. people who aren't physically capable of, of being able to contribute, you know, uh, lend a hand in the construction work. Right. So as a, a great example would be a, a, a veteran, they still have to do sweat equity, but we would make exceptions in the sense we would say, okay, maybe you go to our restore and you volunteer at the restore. Maybe there's other stuff, yeah. office work you can do. So they're still contributing. They're still getting that sense of empowerment from, from having worked uh, towards their house, even if they're not necessarily on the build site each day or each day that they can. Uh, building. So mm-hmm. it's, it's wonderful to own a home. It helps, you know, it's the number one way that people build wealth in this country. It's intergenerational transfer of wealth, yeah. but it's all at the same time, there's more to it than just paying a mortgage payment. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that's why we do a lot of the work that we do because the families that we're partnering with have demonstrated their commitment to, to owning a home that they, they're willing, you know, as, as former president Obama said, they've, they've got skin in the game. You know, the, the, the fact that you are uh, offering education and you're allowing people to participate in, in building their home uh, to me, that, that will create pride of ownership. Um, And, and there's nothing like that. Uh, So, you know, I am so grateful that Habitat for Humanity exists and and really grateful for your work. Um, Jeffrey D. is the president CEO for Habitat for Humanity Metro Maryland. Jeff, it has really been a pleasure talking to you about Habitat for Humanity here on Listen Up Homebuyers. Well, thank you again for having me and love to talk to you more uh, in the future about other ways we can partner together. Absolutely. Part two on the way. (laughs) That's right.